Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. Well, I think offensively we're starting to play like we did at the beginning of the season. Um, defensively, we've played well for the most part. Um, you know, the second half, you know, we didn't cover very good today. Um, you know, obviously he hit some big big throws on us. But, um, um, you know, we we have the ability, if, if we'll continue to put things together, continue to work, um, you know, we, we, we just have to keep going. We can't be satisfied to be 5-5. Five and five. Mike Zimmer, Vikings now 5-5 five and five after they beat the Packers. Comments from YouTube, Purple Daily, Judd Zolgad, Declan Goff, uh, sponsored by our friends at Surly Brewing. Surly Furious, of course, the official beer of the Judd. So if, if you <laughs> like the Judd, you'll love Surly Furious and also TCL TV. Enjoy more with TCL. And in fact, if you're going to be enjoying um, a, a Thanksgiving fiesta of football this weekend, oh, yeah, baby, do it, Declan Goff, on a TCL TV. You'll enjoy it more. It'll give you the clarity, the picture, and the football experience that can't be beat on the couch. And you know what? What the hell? Do it with a Surly Furious in hand. All right. Comments from YouTube. Comments from YouTube. Uh, we always look forward to your comments, which Declan spends weeks and weeks mining. Oh, weeks, yeah. Works very hard at this. So, um... So hit me with comments from YouTube. All right, Judley. A lot of comments on our YouTube page. Uh, and if you want to get your question answered, comment on our, our the, the easiest way to go about this, because we obviously produce multiple videos uh, a week. Comment on our Ventline episode after it posts on our YouTube page. I come through that. It's Ventline. The, the takes are still hot. They're still fresh. It's still Victory Monday here on Purple Daily. Uh, and we'll, we'll, I'll gladly sniff through those, find the best comments. So let's start with this one from about Valkyrie, because it... Tails off from Mike Zimmer's opening comment there to start this episode. Is it possible that the offensive scheme has been taken away from Mike Zimmer? Uh, Valkyrie wants to know, is it possible to say that the offensive scheme has been taken away from Mike Zimmer? Judd, you have some theories on Kubiak and the disciples, quote-unquote, that are helping call plays here. Do you think it's Zimmer being hands-off, or is Zimmer still kind of puppet stringing his way uh, through this offensive scheme? Because the last two games have looked like a completely different yeah. offense. No, I think Mike Zimmer. So here's the, here's, there's so many questions. Like that's a great comment and, and I appreciate it, but there's so much that we don't know. But I will say this, Mike Zimmer clearly had an influence, which I would consider to be a negative one, especially in 2021 on how the offense operated. That has changed. Now the question is, did somebody, did the players get to Mike? Did did people above Mike get to Mike? Did somebody flat out say, Mike, you're going to be fired if you don't at least back off? Um, because I don't think Mike has ever run the offense. I think Mike has had thoughts about what he wants to see, and that has clearly changed. So then the question becomes, okay, so what changed? Well, if you watch how the game is called now, outside of the scripted plays, which have been great all year, there's no question things have changed. The in-game play calling has changed. The thought process has changed. So is that like Cousins going rogue? My answer is absolutely not. So what I what I have heard scuttlebutt about is that Andrew Janoko, who's the quarterback's coach, who seems to be a pretty good offensive mind, is helping Clint Kubiak in-game call plays. Clint Kubiak was struggling mightily to call plays once the script ran out. Clint Kubiak, um, if you if his name was Clint Smith, it's not surprising. He's 34. He's never called plays a day in his life in a game. And now he was. So I think a lot of I think that there's a lot of uh possible variables about what has changed. Uh, Mike is definitely backed off, and I think the most important thing, though, is that as much as the Vikings are trying to gloss over the changes decks, Mm -hmm. because it feels like, and I'm not surprised, but it feels like they're saying, nothing to see here, hey, we just uh, decided to pass the ball more. Um, You know, I mean, Mike Zimmer said the offense has gone back to being the way it was to start the season. What are you talking about, dude? The offense was never this good, this open to finding, let's see, what numbers do those guys wear, 18 and 19? Mm -hmm. Like, (laughs) the offense was never this free in against the Bengals, against the Cardinals, I think the second play from scrimmage was a touchdown pass, a deep shot, which was great to K.J. Osborne, and then that sort of dried up, and it went to the Dalvin plan. So it's almost like they're trying to throw us off the scent of, okay, hold on a second here, something changed. I don't know that the right people are being credited, but I do know this. The change that we've seen in these last two games, Chargers and Packers decks, 
is the only way for a lot of people to save face and save their jobs. So no matter how we got here, it's a good thing for them. And if you're a football fan to watch the Vikings, that for us, that we've gotten here. Absolutely. That's what I, I, I said after the Chargers game. I hope that Mike Zimmer was adapting. And it, it seems like the offense has adapting. 20 targets for Jefferson and Thielen yesterday. Uh, that, that that was two more than even the two had uh, last week against the Chargers, which is a great sign. If, if this team's going to make hay, it's with their offense. Um, so I, I think it's a very good sign of, of what's to come. Is is who's pulling the strings there? That, that that we can speculate, we can figure out, we can do some insiding. Uh, but at the same time, I'm just glad the offense is finally relying, yes, on its top playmakers to make big time plays. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lily is best says on our YouTube channel. I have no idea what the heck to make of Clint Kubiak. He has awesome games and he has ungodly terrible games. Judd, what do you make of Clint Kubiak now through what ten games? Ten yeah. games. And uh, him having an up-and-down season as the Vikings' offensive coordinator. Well, this is why the last two games I think he's getting help, because it things have changed too drastically. Um, the scripted plays, which which you literally sit down and script, it's approximately 12 to 15 plays. And yes, down and distances change things, but the scripted plays were fantastic. And then the scripted plays ran out, and it didn't go to, oh, that's not as good. It went to, what the hell are you doing, bad? And the last two games, that's changed. I, I mean, we saw, just for instance on Sunday, we saw um, Justin Jefferson line up in the backfield, which the Packers didn't expect. It created a one-on-one matchup. And, okay, boys and girls, what do we all know now? Justin Jefferson can <laughs> win. Mr. Jefferson can win one-on-one matchups. That's a great play call. I mean, that's a great formation. It's a great idea. So I think what we make of Clint Kubiak is they basically threw him in the deep end of the pool. And a lot of people said, are you sure that's a good idea? It wasn't. I think now they went and fished him out and got him a life preserver. (laughs) And I'm not saying that he's out. I'm not saying that he's not calling plays. But I am saying that there has been a metamorphosis, I believe, in how it's being done. And I don't think it's Zim helping him. So I think it's probably, as I said, a guy like Janoko, who's probably got a good offensive mind and knows Kirk well and has ideas too. So I think what we make of this is not that Clint is now a genius. I think what we make of this is that now Clint is getting some help here. And in fairness to Clint, he was asked, I mean, that's just because his name is Kubiak doesn't mean that like week one, he's going to, he's, oh man, I'm a, you know, I'm an offensive genius myself. That. That's what I make of, of this long story short, is that the Vikings finally got smart and provided some assistance. Absolutely. Bart says on our YouTube channel, I like the way the team is doing new things and adapting to their strengths rather than expecting different results doing the same thing. Uh, I, I think Bart echoes a lot of what we have been saying, a lot of, uh, echoes a lot of what other Vikings fans have wanted from this offense. They've wanted, fan, they've wanted this team to have and play to their strengths, which is throwing to Justin Jefferson, taking shots down the field. Yep. And uh, I think it's a great sign because Earl on our YouTube comment section here says as well, that's the most deep throws I've ever seen Kirk throw in a game. That's correct. Keep it going. Uh, Kirk, I believe eight passes of at least, I think it was NFL GSS. I said had Kirk had eight passes of at least 15 yards of, 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 of attempted, which is a great sign. Eight passes. That's kind of what you want. And there's going to be times where that results in possible, you know, bad decisions. But I, I think in general, it, it's it's a good sign that the that the team continues to take shots uh, more down the field. The deep pass late in the game with the score tied at 30, 30 what? Um, One. 34, right? Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Well, and, So the deep pass that got picked off initially by the Packers safety. And then was called back because he didn't catch it. It was not a well-thrown ball. But the intention behind that pass was the right one, which is you have to take shots. And I do believe that the football karma gods are much more likely to reward you with a break, which that was, um, when you are being aggressive. So when you're checking it down and you're (laughs) skittish and you get hit and, you, you know, you fumble and you lose it, that's the football karma god saying, this is typical of the BS that you guys pull, and we're not going to reward you because flat out you don't deserve it. So as much as as much as much we can say, oh, man, that passed to Jefferson. Like I could see Mike today saying, that wasn't a good idea. We shouldn't have done that, right? But I say take the shot. 
What do you have to lose? The football game? Your defense was trying to do that in in the second half. So, yeah, I just, for as much as we can debate that play, I and I said this the second it got picked, it's still a good shot. It's st- I would far rather the Vikings go down that way, Dex, than, than by Kirk dancing around in the pocket and checking it down to Dalvin, who fumbles it. I love Ken's comment here on our YouTube page. It says, if the Vikings go to Jefferson more, we are going to see more intercepts, more interceptions. It's the law of averages, but Correct. you will also see more games like Jefferson had against the Packers, so I'll take it. Yep. Bingo. That's exactly what it is. I'd, I'd rather see Thank you. them be aggressive, not doing the check down to, to C.J. Ham. Um, Kirk was asked about check downs at the end of the game. He got a little snippy with ESPN when he was asked about it. We'll play that clip, by Did the he really? way. Yeah, that's snippy. It was just very condescending the way he said it. Well, I, yeah, so it was condescending. Yes, okay. It was it was very it was a little bit of uh classic Kirk Cousins, but them taking shots down the field when the game's tied. Yep. And right before that play that that almost what should have been the, obviously the interception for the Green Bay Packers, um it could have been very easy for the offense to go on conservative route. Well, let's let's run the ball. Number one, so we don't get the ball back. There's no need for us to take shots. Mm-hmm. Our offense has still been fine. Let's not take a shot down the field. No, no, no. They, they still had the fortitude to take a shot down the field. I mean, my God, there's no, there's really, and most, most with the teams that don't employ Justin Jefferson, majority of teams aren't going to take that shot down the field because there's no point to do it, right? Mm-hmm. But the Vikings had the fortitude to do it. I love that decision. I thought it was great that they still said we're going to try to go for it here and go for a big play down the sidelines. I love that decision. Exactly right. And and uh, j- just to backtrack on my point from before to um because I could not recall because I'm aging rapidly the score was tied at 31 when the Vikings did that and here's what I loved the most though so that pass got picked it's not picked but oh boy you dodged a bullet right so I thought to myself they're gonna run here like they are going right. like it's Dalvin time now which is I think you just said the same thing let me go through the next plays that set up the Greg Joseph field goal okay Cousins pass short left to cook but it gets 19 yards, and it's a pass, not a run. Cousins, pass short left to Thielen, 26 yards. Yes, it was short, but one, it wasn't that short, and two, it was a dangerous pass. That ball could have been picked. In fact, Kirk himself in the post game sort of lamented that pass as be contraire. Thielen caught that pass. This is this is what the person said. Passes are going to be picked you because you're taking chances, but those chances, if they work, get you 26 yards. Then the next play was Cook, 12 yards. He falls down on purpose to preserve clock, right? And that leads to two kneel downs and a field goal. And again, Greg Joseph comes in and makes the 29-yard kick to win it. And a lot of people were probably like, they should take shots at the end zone here. That's dangerous. But I think the football karma gods are with you because everything about that drive, to me, was like, we're going for the win. Not... Oh boy, we can't. And and was the field goal a bit conservative? Yeah, it probably was. But what it did was it milked the clock because as Dalvin said, we weren't giving the ball back to Aaron Rodgers. Like I loved everything about that. Everything about how they approached that. It could have gone haywire. The Kirk pass to Thielen could have been picked too. And Kirk's like, ah, now you know, we'd like to find a different way to No! Screw that! Take your chances, dude. You're making how much? Take your chances. Do that. One of my favorite plays of this entire year, opening week, Vikings-Bengals, fourth and inches. Bengals have the ball. I think this was an OT, I think. The defense is packed in. The Bengals are packed in. It's like they're going to run the ball here, right? Fourth and inches, they're going to run the ball. Joe Burrow changes the play, throws a pass over the top, completion, big game. I love that play. Yep. That play took balls because you know what? If that ball hits the turf, you're like, what were they doing? No. No, you got to take chances to win games. I'm not saying be stupid consistently, but I am saying the conservative way of the Vikings previously until the last two weeks is not how you're going to win football games. Nobody in this league, for the most part, is good enough to be like, we're going to dictate how conservative we're going to be. Everyone has to take some chances. The Vikings did good for them. Phillips says it's the most aggressive I've seen them, the Vikings, in the Cousin Zimmer era. Can still do better, 
meaning more play action on first down, trying to spring cook on run less easily, uh, on run less predictable plays. Love that. The third down play to Ham is what they used to do. Yep. We'll have to see if Zim continues his awakening and whether he can shore up the secondary play. Judd, the maximum you are looking for is a fortune favors the bold. I think he was. Fortune, thank you. That's what you're looking fortune for. Fortune favors the bold. Fortune favors the bold. Thank you. Judd, on, on the secondary like quick, uh, off, off Phillip's point there, since we've spent a good chunk of this episode talking about the offense, Pat P comes back yesterday and clearly not at 100%, but obviously still able to play. Uh, how concerned are you with, with the Vikings' ability to, to stop the pass? Because I think it's fair to say that they have they have average cornerbacks. They'd have no shutdown corner. They really have no one that's, that's shutting things down. Maybe Pat P at his, at his 100th percentile is probably the best of the bunch. But how concerned are you with the Vikings' um, lack of ability to stop the pass? Even with Aaron Rodgers carving them up yesterday, like they're, they're going to have to figure out ways to slow guys down. So before Pat P, and Pat P said that he left the game late in the first half uh, to get IVs. Um, now it definitely looked like his hamstring had flared up a bit, but anyway, uh, they also played, so they had Pat P for large portions of that game decks move, play, play the side that Devonte Adams went to, uh, but Devonte plays in the slot a lot. And so that remained McKenzie Alexander, but there were a lot of instances where Pat P still went to that side. Dantzler played some. Breland played more. Breland was uh, was picked on at times and actually probably had, and I have not seen his PFF grade, one of his better performances of the season. But the reality of the Vikings' defense, especially with Daniil Hurt now and Griffin playing way too much, is this. The name of the game, Zim, is shootouts. They're going to be in shootouts. Um, if you go into any game saying my defense is going to win this game, you're going to lose. So, yes, I'm concerned, but my only concern is then are you going to put the kid gloves or or are, are you going to put the governor on the offense? I mean, I think, Declan, that yesterday is indicative of how games from now on probably need to go. Yeah. Like you're going to give up points. You're going to give up passing yards. Your defense just flat out, especially with, with some of the components that have been taken out. It's still got some good players, um, but it's just flat out not going to be as good, right? So I choose not to look at this as a, can you fix the defense? I choose to look at this now as how many points can the offense score? Yeah. I mean, that's the only way to see it because you're not, I don't think you're going to, with this defense, shut teams down. And if Mike thinks that, he's wrong. And that's why he needs to get out of the way and embrace what he needs to do, what we are doing right now. Enjoy the offensive show with as little input as possible. I'll tell you what he can do, Judd, when he gets home after a long day of football work, he sits down on his couch. And even though he's a big wine guy, yeah, I think wine. you know what he can do because this guy is a furious, surly guy in general. I think Mike Zimmer should sit down on his, cr- sit down on his couch, yep. sit down on his little ranch. And crack open one of those Surly Furious. Surly Furious is the beer of choice. And as I said at the outside of the show, it is the beer of Judd. And it's Thanksgiving week, which means that we, ba- you know, basically 5 o'clock on Wednesday, the week is over. Right, Declan? Yep. And that means Thursday comes up, three National Football League games, Friday, college sports. You got the Wild playing. Saturday, more college games. Sunday, National Football League. And there is only one way to be prepared for all of that, and that is to have your fridge have a turkey yep. on the bottom shelf. Damn right. So Because if it goes on the top shelf, it might collapse. Yeah, it might that's collapse. Bad. That's a bad idea. But the rest of your fridge, surly, surly, furious, or, you know, whatever surly brewing product you enjoy. And then the best part is, as you're watching all those sports, or heck, at the Thanksgiving table, do you know what you can do? Show us your cans. Yep, exactly right. Jay Zolgad on Twitter, J-Z-U-L-G-A-D. Send me a, a tweet of your Surly Furious or Surly Can. I'll certainly respond because it's a giving time of year, and it's a drinking <laughs> time of year as well. By the way, drink responsibly. A couple more here, uh, Judd Zolgad. From Ryan, he goes, that's how you win football games. Jefferson is special. Time to go on a run of W's. <laughs> they have the Niners next week on the road. I believe the Vikings are opening up, I think, only two-point underdogs in that game. Okay, I've not looked at the line. Uh, and the line will probably most most likely continue to move between now and kickoff on Sunday in Santa Clara. But uh, what, what's your confidence heading into that Niners game, Judd? Because I think the Niners have been a little up and down What's so funny to me is, you know, everyone always hates this QB win stat. 
and it, it's a bit of a flawed statistic to a degree. But for whatever damn reason, when Jimmy Garoppolo starts, that team wins. I think it's almost a 700 winning percentage when really? he starts. Is it that high? Jimmy Garoppolo, when he starts for the Niners, has nearly a damn 700 winning percentage when he starts. He's, he's a winner. He wins games when he plays. And Kyle Shanahan's a good coach. It's not necessarily because Jimmy Garoppolo is a great quarterback. And they're a weird team, though. They are. They're a very weird team. What's, what's your uh, confidence level that they can pull off another, <sighs> another win oh. and another road win in San yeah. Francisco? I don't. Okay. <laughs> you don't sound so, too optimistic. Well, right I'm now. not. I'm not yet, but it's Monday, so like I am recovering right now from what I saw in, in the Packer game. Uh, I don't have a good feel for it yet. What I will say this is, I think, and this is true of this league consistently, but it seems to be especially true in 2021, Declan. I think assuming anything week to week right now is impossible, right? Because, like, the Vikings are hot. Oh, they're going to play well. Or, you know, they've just won two consecutive games. Um, And then San Fran comes out and plays great. I don't have a feel yet for this game. I will say this. In no way, shape, or form is there any team, I don't think, that should get confident or cocky. Like, there's like there's no Chiefs now, right? Like, I, I think that the Chiefs have won four or five, but they've had a weird year. Like there's not, I don't think there's one team. Buffalo, oh Buffalo is great. Buffalo is great. They get waxed by the Colts. Um, so I, so I would say that the one thing about the Vikings that I feel different, like there's a change, a, a seismic change in in me being uh, a pessimist to saying, oh hold on a second here, is the use of Jefferson. Yeah, because I think he's an absolute star. Like I, I don't think he's good. I think he's great. Um, and and. Uh, as the person said in the comments from YouTube, and that comment's a thousand percent right, is Kirk going to be picked at times? Absolutely. He's going to make some bad throws, but he's going to make the throws. Like the targets to me are so important. And if you go back to, and, and I think that oh, you glasses brought, brought this up before, yeah, because I can't see <laughs> if the paper's close because I'm 52, which is just really sad. I used to be, you know, I could do this, I, and I, now no, I can't. No. Um, just listen to this distribution. Like, this is a bedtime story of distribution, mm. and it just makes you sleep so well. And and campfire. a month ago, a month ago, this distribution didn't happen, Declan. A little campfire for you. A little campfire. Okay, kids, gather around, and let me, to- let me tell you a story about distribution of the football. Name Kirk, who threw 35 passes for 341 yards. And then along came their friend, and his name was Delvin. And he carried the ball. 22 times for 86 yards and a touchdown. But they also threw him the ball four times, and he caught three of them for 29 yards. Wow. Think about that. Yeah. That distribution gives me, it warms the cockles of my heart to hear that distribution story. And if that's what you're going to do, my feeling about you is different. People ordinarily don't change. Things don't change. This has changed. You think about a month ago, how much we rightfully so griped, and yep. we weren't the only ones, right? But 20 combined targets, and then Delvin gets um, 25 touches. Like, this is what we asked for. And Kirk, and yes, he could have been picked off twice, but guess what, kids? He wasn't. Mm-hmm. Like, I look at this box score. Hey, where are those two picks on Kirk? Declan, they're not there. Makes you all warm and fuzzy inside, doesn't they're it? They're not there. You know what's there? Yeah. Three touchdowns, 341 yards. And across the box score, I look. I look across the street, Mr. Rogers, 385 yards, four touchdowns, no picks. If I had told you, if I had told you on Friday, Declan Goff, if I had called you up, hey, Dex, it's Judd, and I had said, I'm going to drink it. I'm going to go Aaron Rodgers, 385, four touchdowns, no picks, passer rating 148.4. Who wins? Viking. Right, yeah. Or, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, Packers, you mean. Packers win. Right. Packers, Packers win. win. Packers win. But no, they didn't. <laughs> because the distribution story I just told you is one that, it gives us hope. Gives us hope, man. So, that's my personal feeling. I love it. Uh, just one more here as we wrap up uh, our little campfire session oh, with, campfire with Papa Judd. Good. Papa Zolgad. Sports dad. Sports dad. Sports, Sports dad. Sports dad. Sports dad. Papa Judd sounds a little, a little weird. All right. Uh, last one here from Tim. Papa Judd does sound. Tim says, get Kirk an offensive-minded coach, and the sky is the limit. You know, uh, Judd, I, I was talking with uh, my buddy Eric yesterday, a diehard Packer fan. 
Um, and he was saying how, well, you know, I continue to tell you, as he tells me, that Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback, so you'll, you'll, be, he'll be keep, you'll be keeping him around next season. And I said, not under $45 million, I'm not. And he goes, well, no one's going to take that cap hit. I was like, well, if you trade him, you know, it, extend you, you, you him extend elsewhere. him, you restructure. There's, there's ways to get around it. Um, but to Tim's point here of getting Kirk an offensive-minded yeah, coach, Shanahan, is... which has been he's been clearly wanting him for years. Yes. Uh, someone like Kellen Moore, who I like, Byron Leftwich uh, in Tampa Bay. There's options if the Vikings do a vetting process if they want to get an offensive-minded coach. Yes. Uh, what well, what is is Kirk Cousins' ceiling? Is is if this is what we're getting from Kirk, which in my opinion is the best version of Kirk I've seen. Yeah. In 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 his tenure in purple. Yeah. Uh, what happens if you actually take off the gloves full time and say, "All right, Kirk, here we go." All right, this is by so. If you take the Vikings from a couple years back with Diggs, Thielen, it's pretty good. Like I, I think an offensive coach with that group would be good. But Declan, Kirk has been given a Ferrari. He's been given a Ferrari. Don't look at this as uh, don't look don't look at this as o- offensive coach with Kirk. That could be good. I'm not denying that. But now think about this, because this is where your mind will blow. Offensive-minded coach. Kirk, which is fine. If Kirk stays, gets extended, Jefferson. Jefferson's the key here. Like, let's not make any mistakes in in how this is seen. And this is not to, to take away from Kirk. What I'm saying is the Ferrari here is J.J. Yeah. Um. So if you give Kirk... Good receivers. I think. I think with an offensive-minded coach, he might be fine. Like, and and look, he's always put up good box scores. Yesterday went beyond. Yesterday passed, and I know he almost threw two picks. But yesterday, from what they did with them, passed the eye test, in my opinion. But it's JJ. Um, that's the difference here, and that's why if you got an offensive-minded coach with Kirk Thielen, Jefferson Cook, um, wow. Justin Jefferson changes everything. He really does. Stefan Diggs is really good. I, I am not, please don't hear me bashing him. I'm not. He did a great job here. And I and he turned himself into a great player. Um, Justin Jefferson is special. Adam Thielen's not special. Stefan Diggs can make special plays, but I do not think he's a special player. Justin Jefferson, th- and this is praise. This is not demeaning the rest of the group. This is praise. Dalvin Cook is special. Is is um, a very good player. Justin Jefferson is in the special camp. Justin Jefferson has a chance to be a Hall of Fame player. Do I think Cook is no? Do I think Thielen is no? Um, those guys are good, and, and I'll take them any day of the week. But Jefferson takes the conversation about what could be with an offensive-minded coach. Think about where you can line him up. There, I, mean, I mean, Dex, we've seen. The smallest of small slivers of like what you can do with this guy. Right. I'm telling you, it's it is as close to Mossonian as we have been. It is. He's he's the best receiver they've had since since Randy Moss easily. I but mean, I mean, you think about what Moss could do. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't do this, but you know, if you put Justin Justin Jefferson back to return punts, I guarantee you he'd be special. Right. Uh, he's that. He's just that good. He's I just agree. that good. He can throw the football. He's I damn mean, good, dude. Yeah. And you can, and he is, he is not being made this yet, but an offensive minded coach who would, he is a potential nightmare. Yes. A nightmare for opposing, for opposing defenses. I dig it. So anyway. I dig it. Well, yeah, that's, uh, that's comments from YouTube. I love comments from YouTube. Some I do. great comments. Our listeners and viewers are incredible. And I do not say that lightly. I do not. Say that condescendingly. Ventline and this show, we get really, really smart, intelligent comments. And I appreciate that. Yeah, I do too. And to you, I tip the Surly Brewing. Appreciate you guys. Comments from YouTube. Judd Zolgad, Declan Goff. Tomorrow, Alex Boone. Booney. Booney coming back in to uh, to the break rhino? down the rhino. Rhino! The, the, the bleeping, bleeping rhino. Uh, the mother bleeping rhino, as he likes to call can't, himself. Can't say it. Oh, God, if we can get Boone off the mic for... for a long time, you 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 act. If your preconceived notions of Alex Boone, what he says, and what's he like off the microphone, they are true. They are just very true. Boone after dark could be fun and potentially dangerous. Boone working blue, that would be a great show. I like that one. 
Purple Daily, rate, like, subscribe for daily Minnesota Vikings conversation. For Judd Zolgad, I'm Declan Goff. We'll see you guys tomorrow.